just going to record this for myself. Um, okay, thanks for joining me. Um, it's a good day to talk, actually. There is quite a lot going on. Um, I'm going to start, I've got the S&P up, which I want to come back to, but I'm going to start with gold, because that one's really on the move. Um, okay, so gold's had a really good run up. Now, we had a lot of resistance at um, I don't know if you, if you if you follow me, but if you're on my YouTube channel, you will have called uh, um, known that I called this move up in 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 gold. I said that gold was going to explode to the upside. Now, um, mainly, uh, where do we get in? We were in around the sixteen sixty area. We were in around here. Forget why now. It's because, I think we we yeah, we broken above what I'd seen as a double top. Uh, let me go right back. Um, just uh, double bottom rather, not double top. Where am I? Yeah, here we go. Okay, so it's actually a triple bottom. This is why I got so bullish about gold. Uh, triple bottom is pretty rare. Um, weekly candle on the weekly chart, you see uh, more of a doji than than a than a, um, than a shooting star, but a couple couple of moderate, you know, neutral to to bullish candles. And then we had this big um, bullish engulfing candle here uh, three weeks ago in gold. So that to me indicated that we've got, probably got a triple bottom. Um, and the market should push higher. So for the following week, well, certainly got really lucky because um, we were getting in around the um, the mid sixteen sixty area, and then the market rocketed like ninety points. I didn't manage to run it that far. I only got up to um, seventeen forty four, I think, was where I got out of my longs. But anyway, it's still still a, a really a, a great trade. Okay, so gold was looking pretty positive, and it did get to my target. Now, my target. Uh, and the resistance area, as you can see, are pretty clear why I thought this would be a resistance. Market turned around a bit quicker than I thought it would, actually. I thought we'd have, have more time to get short. Now, taking the peak of uh, December 2020 and projecting it all the way through, joining these two, three peaks there, um, we got a trend line at 17.89 is the exact value, coupled with the 38.2% FIB at uh, 17.87. So it wasn't a huge surprise that we reversed from there, although... I didn't actually manage to get short. I was waiting for, well, I was trying to be a little bit patient and um, we, <laughs> we literally uh, hit it and then and reversed. So that's from the weekly chart, that strong resistance level from the 38.2% FIB and the trend line just below these moving averages. So let me see, go back to the daily chart. Um, and we are indeed coming back down. So um, I didn't manage to sell it up there, but I did sell it on the break below. Uh, where did I get to now? I'm trying to remind myself. Um, what was my break point? Oh, yeah, it was 16.68. So I was actually using not that trying uh, trend line there. There was another trend line that I was using somewhere. I, oh, yes, here we go. Um, I can take that off. And I can put... I'll leave that on actually. It was this trend line here that I was looking at because I figured that this was something of a head and shoulders pattern. And so once we broke this trend line there, actually, that, for some reason, that trend line showing at 1761, but we were selling it around 76, 1767, 1768 on the break of oil, uh, gold rather. So where can it go? Well, it can go down quite a long way, I think. I think ultimately gold will turn around and go up because I do think that um, we are beginning a bullish trend, but we can have quite a big pullback. So um, well, I've just used some fibs to get a rough idea just without doing too much examination. Um, certainly, we can get to 1740, 1748, 1746. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see it's a bit lower, actually. 1720 wouldn't be a complete surprise. Uh, but we've called that right anyway. So it does look like there is some room on the downside. Uh, eventually, maybe in a, in a couple of um, webinars, I'll be looking to buy into gold on a, on a longer term basis. But I do think we're going to get a correction now. OK, um, that's gold. Silver, similar story, not a surprise. So I, I couldn't actually pinpoint the, um, I couldn't actually pinpoint the reason why silver turned around. Well, I mean, 50% fib is all I could really find on the daily chart. So uh, not the uh, most exciting reason. And I, I personally wouldn't have shorted there, if I'm honest. I didn't see it as a strong enough resistance level um but um we did get this uh, big red candle and then we followed through to the downside right so it's only 50 percent fib uh 
and the break below this little these two little lows here around 21 double oh well actually it was 21 20 uh, that i took as today's trigger for a sell was it yeah just below 21 20 uh anyway we, we broke lower and it does look like the uh, silver can continue this is this is quite an interesting chart i'm sure you've you've seen this before i'm sure i'm not the first one to show it to you but there is a potential cup and cup and handle here uh where is it now um yeah so people are talking about this cup and handles uh, uh on, on the pretty easy to see on the weekly chart i think that is the cup up is it and that is the handle. I mean, it's an enormous pattern. It really is huge. If this, if this is what it, what some people are saying it is, then silver is going to absolutely go to the moon in the next few years. Um, but for the, for the time being, I think silver is going to go down. Uh, we do have really good support in silver today at 2050, 2040. So we're moving swiftly towards that area now, aren't we? 2040, 20, uh, 2050, 2040, that sort of 10 pip area is where we should have some support for silver uh, i'm going to look at the dollar index now i see stock markets are plunging as i speak to you which is pretty good good for me anyway um yeah i'm actually just going to quickly look at my trading account while i'm talking to you because i'm short the short gold and i'm short the uh, stock market so that's kind of nice um right where are we now okay us dollar index now Probably need to show you the weekly chart for that. Do I? Weekly, weekly. There we go. Um, yes. So we had some good support down here um, on the weekly chart around 105. I'm going to call it 105, 20, 104, 80. Now we didn't quite get there to be fair. We got to 105.34. Pretty close. So it looks like. Well, that was the big support area for me. And what are we? Uh, so far, we've got you know a, a moderately look, bullish looking candle. Use sorry, charts are very dark. Maybe use lighter colours if possible. Okay, are they very dark? Um, I'll, I'll try and change it. I can't do it for today, but I'll, I'll try and try and change it another day. Um, so uh, we've got a good recovery in the dollar index off the support level. It was, it was just above the two hundred weak moving average as well in fact so the red line here so we've bounced off quite nicely so i think the dollar is still in a bull trend uh, well it is in a bull trend and i think that was just a correction at the moment the reaction here will be really important and we'll see quite how uh, how much of a, 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 a we'll see if we get some sort of topping pattern but i think we do have to probe and do a retest to the upside before the market could go lower if indeed the, if indeed we have got a trend change but right now i'm just going to Put some trend lines on as I talk to you. There we go. But right now, um, I'm going to assume that we're going to get a decent bounce in the dollar. Okay. So on that note, euro. Uh, yeah. Now this, oh, I, I wasn't sure if this would hold. To be fair, either the euro really was apps was tearing away over the last couple of weeks. Well, no, over the last uh, since the beginning of November. So only about uh, two and a half weeks. And, and absolutely rocketed up to the 200 week a day moving average rather which of course we hadn't seen since or we hadn't touched since uh, July 21 so we, that's the first time we've back, been back to the 200 uh, day moving average um, and the, so the red that's the red line is the 200 day moving average and we revert we reversed from there personally I must admit I wouldn't have sold it I the re, the only reason I did sell it uh, I didn't sell it as we hit the 200 day moving average. I didn't think that was going to hold, but um, if I remember rightly, yeah, we have, we, um, that was a good little indication that we were going to go down. So it was around there that I was looking to, to get short and we've broken below the one hour, the blue uh, one hour moving average as well. So it looks quite negative. I, I do think the dollar, yeah, is going, going to see a decent recovery. Uh, we we were just we'd gone up so much in the euro versus the dollar, and obviously got overbought. And at the end of the day, we are in a bear trend, so I suppose we had to come down eventually. I just didn't think the 200 uh, day moving average was heavy enough, but it was. Um, my moving averages are the 50, the 100, the 200, and the 500. 
Um, I should use shorter term moving averages, but what I've done here is just try and, because I have to cover 24 different markets, I sort of worked out a one size fits all strategy of analyzing everything across the board, Forex, commodities, indices, uh, uh, bonds, everything. So um, my techniques are pretty simple, uh, which I do teach in a course if anyone's interested. Right. Um, so the Euro, Aussie is also looking pretty negative. So we had, so it was only Fibonacci resistance. There wasn't anything else up there. I couldn't find a trend line. I couldn't find a moving average. I couldn't really find any, even the price action wasn't that convincing. But anyway, we had these um, Fibonacci levels. I'm trying to show you how far it goes back. Wow. Okay, that goes all the way back, all the way back to 2020. Um, so we don't need to worry about that one. In fact, we overrun the, can take that off. Uh, but going back to, here um we hit the fibonacci levels around uh, 6739 and um i'm gonna have to move this sorry um sorry where was i we the um fibonacci level around 6740 uh, that proved to be the resistance we did overrun one day pulled back below this 61.8 i've got like a confluence of movement of um, fibonacci levels there and we've reversed from that so again don't forget you know when you look at the weekly chart for the aussie dollar it is most definitely in a longer term bear trend so there you go as i just showed you I, i'd say that that's a pretty solid bear trend for um since the beginning since february of 2021 last year and this just does look like a bounce in a bear trend therefore as we hit there be interesting to see what this move, uh, Fibonacci level does. I probably should have had it on there. Nope, doesn't really tie in. So I'll get rid of that one. Uh, okay. So yeah, it does look to me like the dollar can can recover. Certainly against the Aussie and the Euro. Oh, Canadian dollar. This is a bit of a beauty. So I was looking at this um where do i start with this one so weekly chart uh dollar cad now dollar cad's been hard to read for quite a long time really i mean look at this chopping backwards and forwards here for almost a year that's horrible to me that's really not easy for me to uh, figure out where the market's going and that's the weekly chart so when we move to the daily chart but now suddenly it's starting to make sense and it's starting to make sense because we did have this huge consolidation phase um so yeah, as I say, what it was August 21 to, I'm going to call it September 22. So we had 12 months of this horrible chop backwards and forwards, um, up one month, down the next kind of thing. And then finally we broke. Once we broke, we did jump onto a long here. That looked pretty good. Uh, and then we, we shot higher, but we formed a head and shoulders pattern at the top here. Can you see that? So there was the head. Uh, sorry there was the left shoulder there was the head there was the right shoulder now i took that as a head and shoulders pattern it may not really be that valid because it's not at the top of a huge bull run well maybe maybe you would say it is yeah maybe it is in proportion but anyway it's quite a big one compared to the rally which was really only only this area here anyway market came down as we expected it would and it hit this 38.2 percent fib which i just showed you on the weekly chart at 132.23 which is coupled with the blue 100 day moving average. So we bounced beautifully off there. Some long lower wicks just showing you how the bar aggressive buyers came in during the day and pushed the prices back up uh, by the close. So um, what are we today? We are Thursday. Uh, yesterday was Wednesday, nice, nice bullish candle. Uh, Tuesday, at least we had the long lower wick, but Wednesday's candle was even more bullish, obviously. Anyway, we did finally take off. So I think we're going to uh, 134.60. That looks like a reasonable target. Got maybe another 50, 60 pips on the upside um, for anyone who managed to buy into that one, if you were following my reports. Oh, look how sold it was. we were on the, on the um, daily chart as well. And I think I've got the hourly chart here. Yeah, so we are moving higher quite nicely now, breaking out of what I could probably call this sort of resistance area. There we go. Look, nice little trend line there. Hit it several times. Once we broke, nice big green candle as we broke through. That's always helps to confirm. 
pushed up above the 200 period 200 hour moving average back down to, te uh, to test the trend line just for anyone who didn't manage to get in a you know really lovely retest um to, to push in what's the low of that candle uh 133.57 uh and now we've pushed up to 133.89 and it looks like we're going to 134.25 for this dollar versus canadian dollar there we go look that was another nice break point there so back to the daily chart to see how far we can go on the upside um i did have i think it was 134.25 but we can certainly get to 134.65 as well maybe you've been up to this break point here about 134.85 so anyway the high 134 area is where i think we can go with this so we might have another 70 80 pips on the upside but uh, any retest of that area that that could be a good support level on the way down again we could we could hold it again look it, it coincided so nicely with july's peak and also with the early peak of september of this year of course we broke through uh, higher when um later on in the month but uh that, yeah so it ties in quite oh, look we've actually got a high a candle high here on the, on the 1st of september so that really was a, a resistance level around 132.20 on the way up and a really nice support level on the way down uh, okay so anyway that just kind of reinforces my view that i think the dollar's gone a little bit further to go on the upside for now where are we 20 past so if there's anything you want me to look at as always please do let me know oh yeah let's have a look at the dollar again we're, we're looking at uh, dollar pairs anyway okay sorry having a quick look at my positions positions again um so dollar yen dolly yen. the, the short term the, the daily chart isn't telling us much now why did i decide oh yeah yeah we basically got this um support area around 140 00 uh, but we we overran so this was confusing me i will be honest i thought okay we've broken lower but we decided not to break lower and um we ha we well when you looked at it on the hourly chart we had an inver an inverse head and shoulders or what i what i think is an inverse head and shoulders anyway it looks like we've broken above this trend line no matter what there we go nice trend line again worked quite nicely i think i can argue that this is an inverse head and shoulders pattern uh on the jet on the dollar yen uh and if it is we've just broken through it with a nice bullish candle in fact, i should probably be jumping into a long right now as i speak but the the, the best support level is around 140.05 um but that looks like the beginnings of a decent move higher now for the dollar yen the first target would be a fairly obvious uh 140 180 three you just scratch out and figure out where i got that number from okay that, that goes an awful, awfully long way back what i really need to do is put this fib on here to give me a little bit of an idea where we can go just quickly without spending too much time on it 141 uh 00 141 10 would be the first target we could even get up to 140 what is this 141 80 142 00 where we've got the 200 hour moving average plunging uh new zealand dollar yen yes i will happily do that well you've chosen about the most difficult, <laughs> most difficult chart for me to read alejandro i know this has been horrible absolutely horrible right i'll see I, i'm not gonna make any sense of it but i'm gonna go work through it for you all right um so obviously from oh, where's the weekly chart Um, okay, I'm going to isolate this area and say that we have been in a bull trend, but how would you have been able to run a long position here? You know, okay, spike up for three weeks and then sideways for what, six months? Then you finally make a bit of a move up, yeah, but then, you know, this horrible area here, you would, wouldn't have been able to hold on to a long position. I suppose you can call it a flag because of that there is, there is a quite a nice upper trend line there, yeah once we broke through it it was a nice support level too wasn't it before we went up and then plunged again anyway look this is really a difficult pair to trade seems to spend a lot of time uh, moving sideways and look this to me is horrible um i don't know what to do with this i don't i, I can argue that it is a, a head and shoulders pattern um look one second one second 
Yeah, I can argue this is head and shoulders back. It's a huge one. So if it does play out, it's going to be quite a big uh, deal. But mind that no. One second. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so that trend line that I've just drawn here, I've got my cursor on it now. That could be the neckline to a head and shoulders pattern, and this could be the head. It's only fractionally below the uh, head, this sh the shoulder, the left shoulder. It's only fractionally below the head. I could call this the head, and I could call this the right shoulder. I think, but anyway, it doesn't really matter because the the the, the break point, the neckline is 81 double low, and we're at 85.25, so we're way, way ahead. Now the moving averages on the daily chart, they're not giving me much help at all because um the the 50 day moving average is obviously flatlining the 100 is even the 200 is starting to flatline and we're just hovering we're holding well above the 500 so the the daily moving averages are no good to me at all uh because we've just been going sideways for so long look i've got trend lines on there if you're going to ask me which way we're going i really don't know um i haven't got a clue mate i'm really sorry about that uh have you, have you uh, alejandro what are you thinking you got any ideas anything that i should be looking at with that pair um, if you have, let me know, because I, I can't really see anything. <laughs> I don't know what to say to you. Uh, okay, uh, I'd like to know analysis on gold. Yeah, I've, I've, I've done gold already, but I'll run through it for you again in case you uh, missed it or anyone else did. Okay, so the big thing for me uh, was the triple bottom here. A massive bullish engulfing candle uh, on the first low. Massive bullish, in bullish engulfing candle on the second low. But... Uh, and then the third low, which I wasn't sure if it was going to hold because you don't get triple bottoms very often. They're not common, um, but it did hold. We didn't get a bullish engulfing candle on the third low. Uh, we were getting quite a nice climb up in the stochastic, though. Slow stochastic was climbing, so there was a very positive divergence there. Uh, but if you go to the weekly chart, you'll see how we had... Okay, the first candle, moderately bullish. I mean, indicate more neutral than anything, more of a doji really than a shooting star. Same thing for the second candle. But because we had those massive bullish daily, uh, bullish engulfing candles on the daily chart, that told me that, that the double bottom was in. So I was a bit surprised. I was getting long, actually, uh, to be fair. I was getting long. Where was I getting long? Anyway, I saw the double bottom. Oh, yeah, I was expecting us to break above 16.75, and we never did. And I think I was getting long on the pullback and getting stopped out of my longs. And then we re by the time we retested the low, I thought, well, that's not going to hold. Um, the, bo the double bottom's not in, the triple bottom's unlikely to hold. So I, I stupidly did not get long on the retest and didn't take advantage of the triple bottom. But what we did do, we did manage to start jumping in eventually um, on the pullback here. So we hit the re hit resistance, the 1683 resistance, and then we pulled back. And just using fibs, I think it was, and trend lines, um, I, just, I decided that we should be buying in there. And we did do well to out that, didn't we? Alejandro, I'm pretty sure you got in on that gold trade. Um, and then off we went. Now I got out at uh, 17, I got out around here, um, 1745. I didn't have the nuts to run it any further. But I have got short now. Alejandro, as you all know, we've been talking about getting short gold. Um, I missed it. I don't know whether you called it. Uh, six, seven, 1785, 1795 was my first sell level, and we just hit it and, and, and completely reversed quicker than I'd expected. So I didn't manage to get into a short position, but I have now because when you look at the hourly chart, you're short in gold. Good man. Well done. I'm guessing you're short the stock markets too. Um, now, here's what I see. So on the hourly chart, this was just a nice pattern. Having missed the sell of the actual resistance level, this worked quite nicely because there were some fairly easy point pointers to show that gold was going to take a bit of a dive. That trend line? No. Actually, I think I'm going to take this one. Yeah, that looks kind of good. That does look good, doesn't it? Let's blow this chart up. Um, no, I don't, I don't uh, consider the... Um, um cot what's that the um something of traders um report yeah it, te it tells you the um longs and shorts and bloody blah, blah no i don't really but i think you probably should bear it in mind i mean i would never base a trade solely on that not at all but um commitment of traders that's what it is is that what you mean i think it is um but i think it is worth following i think it really is worth following I i'm a believer in um following volumes um, okay, so well, once we broke the 
uh, this trend line here, 1770. That was my break point this morning. So I was sort of selling at 1668. I consider it, can, considered it broken down, retest, nice retest. Got, I think, exactly uh, 1770. Did indeed. Um, so double trend lines there, keeping this bounce. Now, look, this is quite a good bounce up. I don't know what we're doing. Bouncing from 1756. Um, but I would have thought we'd get into some resistance around 1767. What is that bounce all about? Put some fibs on there. Yeah, it's quite a strong bounce. Don't know what's triggered that. Just going to check the stock markets, see if they're having a move higher. No, they're definitely not. So I don't know what the bounce is in gold, but gold's a bit more choppy, I suppose. Okay. Um, oh, yes. For course, that, thank you for course details. Uh, what was the other question? Commitment of traders. Yeah, I've answered that one. Um, I will actually just show you now. Where are we? Oops. If you can see this on the screen, I'm not sure if you can. Oops. Right, well, that's actually coming up. I will go back to my chart. Um, yeah, so um, gold bouncing, not quite sure why, but we should have resistance. Uh, certainly it's 1765, 1770, if we get that far. We're pulling back down again now. I don't know what that silly rally was all about. Um, oh, yeah, where's my, there we go. So website is here. If you can see that, I don't know whether you can. And if you go to daytradeideas.co.uk and you hit the menu um, you can go to the trading course I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to do something special for you I'm going to offer you, uh, if you if anyone wants to do it I'm going to offer you a 25% discount um, on the course okay so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to send you the link and if you I'm going to set a code straight after this I'm going to do you 25% off if you use that code. How about that? Okay, back to my charts. Uh, you can read all about the uh, course on the website. And if you've got any questions, please do ask me. Okay, gold is still pushing up. This is looking like quite a positive candle on the hourly chart, isn't it? Look, we've actually recovered huge loss. We've, that's, 10, that's a 10-point recovery. I'm surprised at that. I'm surprised at that. I don't know why gold is bouncing off 1756. I can't see any reason at all for that. But anyway, okay, that's it for gold, I think. I better get on the stock markets before we run out of time. 15 minutes, yeah, that's enough. Okay, I'm just going to record this bit for myself. Um, we are looking at the DAX, and I'm going to go to the, yeah, I'm going to go to the daily chart. Okay, uh, the DAX was fairly simple. I mean, I, I really don't know what this rally up is. It's one heck of a rally, so strong, straight through the 200-day moving average. Um, if you remember earlier, I showed you how the Aussie and a couple of other markets had, had uh, hit a oh, gold. Hit, uh, was it, no, uh, hit moving averages and just reversed. Well, didn't work here. The um, Aussie sailed through there, sailed up through 13.550, and we almost got as close to the 61.8% fib, which is at 50. 14,994. We've got the 500 day moving average at 14,520. But we've backed away from there uh, today. Uh, today we're below uh, yesterday's low. So we are we do seem to be moving to the downside. And I think, judging by the short term charts, look, what did I have here? Yeah. Just this little break point there. Uh, 14,280. We've got moving average crossover on the hourly chart, 50 bouts across below the 200, the 100. Uh, we broke below that little trend line there. I had a little trend line up here as well, but didn't, that didn't come into play. So once we broke down, uh, we can now head for... Where are we? Yeah, that's one heck of a run. It'll be interesting to see what the weekly candle looks like because... um on the well this is this is the weekly chart look we got you can see how close we got to the 
fib when you look at it on the weekly chart it doesn't look like there's much we have we, we haven't fallen too far from that resistance level at 14,994 and the 100 week moving average of 14,541 so um that is why i chose um 14, uh, 500, 14,600 is my resistance level, but we didn't quite get there. 14,641, uh, 14,461, I should say, rather, and we do, and we've now reversed. So I think, I mean, I personally think that this was a massive short squeeze in the stock market, so I don't really, I mean, it's insane. Um, firstly, I don't know why anyone would think the Fed are going to pivot. They haven't made any indication that they're going to do that at all. Oh, we just had dollar news out, did we? Ah, great. Well done. Thank you for that. That's good. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. That, is that that's the reason for for the gold move? Is it? Um. Okay, so euro is a little bit off its lows. Yeah, about twenty pip off, pips off the lows. Um. Okay, I don't know what the dollar news is, but if anyone knows, let 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 us know. Let me know, please. Um. Let's have a look weekly chart on the DAX. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we'll get much of a negative candle. We we would have to absolutely collapse to get a bearish engulfing candle. I don't see us closing below thirteen four hundred. I just wanted to check that. I'm going to go back to the hourly. Okay, so um, it does look like the DAX has reversed from a fairly obvious resistance, but didn't even get there. Even the neg even the candles weren't that negative. I mean, okay, we've got um, small bodied candles, so yeah, it does show that the market is sort of exhausted and com more coming into balance. But today's the first red candle. So it looks like it is the start of the move to the downside. Okay, US stock markets look a little bit more negative than the DAX, perhaps. Okay, so um, what am I looking at here? Yes, I am looking at, okay, let me try and, there we go. I had a 38.2% fib at 4,000. So this confused me. Now on, was it Tuesday? We had the PPI number out of the US, which was something like 0.2% weaker than expected. <laughs> and stock markets just took off. One, one and a half, two percent, maybe even a rally in the stock markets. I, I didn't understand it. Didn't know what was going on. Um, as if that, you know, the markets were behaving as if the Fed had cut interest rates. Um, that was a spike up um, on the hourly chart uh, on the PPI number. But of course, we came crashing down. Um, I think that was, was it, was that the missile? Sorry, no, that was something else. Anyway, um, market then came crashing down. Maybe, maybe it was the missile in Poland. Um, but look, we broke in the E-mini, we broke what I, what I, what I said to my subscribers anyway, was, um, the neckline of a head and shoulders. So on the hourly chart, I considered this to be the, um, right shoulder, the left shoulder rather, the head, and then some form of right shoulder here, um, I thought we might break there. We didn't. We had a little bounce to the moving averages and then boom, down. So this is working out as expected, really, getting a bit of a negative crossover on the hourly moving average. But, uh, but as I said before, all of this based on the fact that we'd run into resistance around 4,000 to 4,020. It was just that little overrun to 4050 that fooled me on the PPI number. Following day, high at 4015, so bang, bang in the middle of where I thought we would top. And now we're heading down to 39.21, which is actually, well, the only support level that I would consider um, uh, be worried about today. Um, 39.25, 39. No, I'm going to say it's 39. Yeah, well, anyway, look, 39.25 down to 39.15 because 39.15 is the 100-day moving average, which did hold here, not accurately, but it did hold here. So it's it's worth respecting. We start getting below 39.10, 39.00. Um, then that is going to trigger further significant moves to the downside. And I still think the stock markets are in a bear trend. I still, I don't understand what this, why this recovery was so strong. But, you know, when you look at it, it really only fits in with the pattern. I mean, this was a very strong recovery. Obviously, this was a very strong recovery. But look how badly we plunged afterwards. Again, very strong recovery here. Beat the previous high. But look at the plunge that followed. Um, you know, again, almost looks like we're building a bull trend with, with, the, with, the, with the second peak so far above the first peak but then bang we crash so it really is quite a pattern here of up in a very fast escalator <laughs> and then down in a lift um and i think that's what we've just seen here 
and I think it's just finished. I think we have had, actually, to be fair, although it felt like a very aggressive rally, it was nothing compared to this. Look, you know, this really was so, so quick and so brutal. Um, shorts were absolutely annihilated there. And through, before you know what, then we spent the next two months crashing from 43.27 down to 3,500. So, yeah, you know, it was a big move. What was that, 20%? Um, then, so, yeah, really, this this uh, recovery is, is nothing special and not uh, not out of the context of the bear market. Uh, look at this inverse head and shoulders pattern at the bottom of it. Where was it? Was that it? Yeah, look at that. This, this was the beauty. This told me that we were going to rally. I actually did cover this in one of the weekend webinars. But look at that. I mean, perfect. Perfect little inverse head and shoulders pattern. Um, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, straight through the trend line. Okay, retested it and overran it. But then we went when we retested it here two, three times, boom, and then off we went. So that was a real nice pattern. Keep an eye out for things like that. And as I say, on the other end of the scale, now it looks like we've got another head and shoulders pattern. Whoops, what have I done? Uh, uh, there, which has triggered a break to the downside. So S&P loves a bit of head and shoulders action by the looks of it. Yeah, and as I say, I do think this is the beginning of um, beginning of a, of a next serious leg to the downside. Now, this fooled me the last time. We broke below the, um, there's a trend line there, and the 200-week moving average, but we did not close below it. Uh, we bounced back up. Uh, anyway, I, if we break it this time, and I think we probably will, and I think we'll probably break 3,500 as well, um, and we can easily see 3,300. But look, that's, that's way ahead. I don't think we're going to be doing that overnight, although I wouldn't rule it out before Christmas. Um, question. Euro dollar short sitting above 200 SMA. What's my call? Hang on. Right, you're saying that the euro dollar, well, yeah, well, I mean, that, that was my, that's, that's the reason I think the euro dollar reversed. And look, Although on that PPI number on Tuesday, we spiked above the 200 day moving average, that was a massive bull trap because obviously the market then came down to close almost unchanged, fractionally up, um, open 32, yeah, it was only like 24 pips up on the day. So big bull trap, loads of bulls caught, uh, caught in that one. As we reject, we tried it again the next day, but only got up to uh, 104.38 and then pulled back with a small upper wick and of course today we've reversed and uh, come down so to me it does look like the euro uh, dollar will will continue lower is that, is that does that answer your question okay um the uh, nasdaq has also rejected the 23.6 percent fib at 11,940 so um what did I have my resistance at? 800, 900, 11, 800, 11, 900. I can't remember now. Uh, but anyway, that 23.6% FIB resistance coupled with the 100-day moving average resistance, again, a little bit of a spike above just to fool everybody, but left a, bear tra a bull trap there with a long upper wick. And then, of course, a nice bear trap yesterday, continuing that bear trap, I should say, as, as the big red candle here uh, closed below the previous day's low. And now we're pushing down again. So this really doesn't look good at all for the bulls. Um, not at all. Uh, this was the head and shoulders pattern. On the oh no, sorry, that's on the weekly chart. That's not what I'm trying to show you. Uh, hour, 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 hourly chart. Only got a couple of minutes left. Yeah. Uh, okay. There's your head and shoulders pattern. Here we go. That was how I thought that the Nasdaq would work today. Um, only a small pattern on the hourly chart, so it's not big. You have, have to have your eyes peeled to see it. Um, shoulder, head, shoulder, break of neckline at 11,700, which is why I think I had a sell on a break, sell on a break below 11,700 today in the report. Um, maybe Alejandro can back me up on that if I did say that. Anyway, look, we've got quite a move to the downside now, just beginning um, when you look at this hourly chart for the, for the NASDAQ. So, um, again, good indication that stock markets have got a really decent plunge coming on. Dow Jones.
Um, some negative candles around the 61.8% fib. This is a very weak argument, but look, we did get up as a 61 uh, up as far as the 61.8% fib at 33,700. Um, then we got some negative candles. Well, the first indication after such a massive, I mean, this candle is insane. I don't think there was anything that particularly triggered it either. Huge up move. Um, 100 and, oh God, 1,350 point uh, pit ticks. Just, just bonkers on what? Um, straight through the 500 day moving average. Uh, but then we tested the 61.8, we overran, we got a doji. That was the first indication that there was no follow through. Then we got more of a negative candle with the long upper wick and the small red body. Probably should blow that up. Then we got another doji, really showing that, that, that um, maybe the bulls were running out of steam with this red bodied doji, another green doji, and now bang. Finally, the big red candle that tells us that we're probably going down and that we've rejected that 61.8% uh, fib resistance level. We're testing the 500 uh, day moving average. It was some, it did offer resistance on the way up, didn't it? It certainly did on the, on, on the 1st of November or 2nd of November. And then again, just about held here on these two days before we burst up. So there is a good chance that that will be support on the downside today. Who knows? Maybe that's going to be the low for the day that we're seeing right now. We are testing a trend line and a 200 hour moving average well on the Dow. So look, that is a decent enough support level for now. We'll see if we bounce. But but longer term, I think that any bounce now in the stock markets is a selling opportunity. I think that they are going to collapse. And I think I'm running out of time. That's 3, 13, uh, that's, uh, 13.44. So we're done. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if that support level holds. I'm short some S and P's. I suppose a sensible thing for me to do would be to buy them back and see if we hold. Okay, thanks so much. Hope that was helpful.